I always have to set these goddamn stream tags. Why can't they just save? What are you painting? Uh, I'm building. Oh, what are you building? Uh, Howling Banshees. <laughs> oh, you picked, I saw the, uh, you picked those up. That's yeah, I found it. Grab them more. Cool. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. <sighs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Thursday Hobby Night stream. We are uh, getting a little fancier here. Wow, dude. We got like a banner and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we got like a, like a banner. We got like a banner. Sure, and there's like oh, a and box where Jay's where, face where will face one day go. One day go. Yeah. When we tech up, you know? Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. So uh, we're gonna set like a little discussion topic and uh, kind of just when we when no one's asking questions, we'll just kind of revert back to that topic. That's kind of I think a good format. Yep. I gotta talk about something. <laughs> no, I wasn't a graphic guy. Definitely not uh, me. I don't know. No, I, I know think uh, if Jay and I had it our way, it would still be basic as F. You know. <laughs> What are you uh, What are you working on today, Jay? Uh, howling banshees, you know, because uh, I don't have enough just gray built models to paint, so uh, I gotta <laughs> add more to the pile. Because that's what we do, you know. We it just it makes us feel comfortable in these troubling times and still just add more to the pile. I yeah. think, uh, and that way I can buy more. So it's for the Jay's, Jay's really doing it to save the economy, I think. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I, the problem is I bought these like weeks ago. So. Oh well, then I guess not. <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got there? You got oh, you got friggin' uh, what's his name? Yeah, Red, uh, Red, Red Skull. Skull. Yeah, I'm gonna finally yeah. paint some uh, Crisis Protocol stuff. I'm gonna smash some base coats on this guy. See how far I get. Oh, these guys are a couple of steps. There's a couple of steps. <laughs> What's your uh, key instructions? Wait, it's only five in a box at least. What do I get? Oh god, they have options and stuff. Oh boy. Of course Jay doesn't know a thing about the rules, so good luck. Good luck, have fun. I mean <laughs> I could I could like spend a minute reading about it, but <laughs> I have a feeling you're not going to. Seems silly. You know what? I have two boxes, so we'll just build uh We'll just build both Exarchs, you know? There you go. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> rule of cool. A rule of cool. I'm gonna use some contrast paint to uh, throw some base coats down. Mm. That's right, rules are for chumps. Rules are for chumps. No, we didn't get John. John actually didn't make the thing either. It was our buddy uh, Mitch, actually. Oh. Mitchell 4 j Mitchell. He was disgraced by our basic channel. He's like, like, come on, guys. Come on. He's, yeah, he's, he felt such pity for us. That, yeah. uh, he's like, I gotta, I gotta do something about this. So what is the state of the retail hobby store, Jay? Other than Oof. just answering Oof. one word, shambles. Oof. Uh, cataclysmic. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's not good. It is not good. Um, generally, generally, um, I think, uh, for us, it's, it's obviously the, the difference between three weeks ago and today is, is still pretty huge. Um, but, uh, we, we managed to, to, to still be, sell a few things here and there. So it's, it's not the end of the world for us yet, but yet that is, but, uh, um, 
yeah, I think there's certain stores that are that are really uh, panicking right now. Pretty hard. So, what do you think the uh, the main driver for that's going to be? Like, obviously, with the with the with the you know, you're not being able to like person to person contact is going to be a thing for a while. Well, if you're um, if you rely on on um, magic, for example, to be your uh, big main source of, or like a big pillar of your income, you're, you're definitely um, you know afraid right now because that's magic is tends to be played. Um, that's like more it's played more than it's not you know like like miniatures like, like we're participating in the hobby right now building just building and painting and, and hanging out at home but magic yeah you, you spend time building decks and things but ultimately it, it, playing is what keeps that product moving in that game um you know it, it's got like a very um uh, uh active meta maybe too active i mean you can play it online i suppose but that's not going to help the local store so um yeah stuff like that stores that rely if you're a, uh, i mean obviously it goes with the thing if you're a um a venue like a board game cafe you, you might as well just close the doors i would imagine and just hope to wait it out i don't really know how you um deal with the current um you know uh, landscape. Otherwise, I really, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't have too many ideas there. I'd go a little. I'd probably lose my mind a little bit. It's, at least a restaurant can sell takeout, and you know we can ship. We have lots of inventory to ship. But um, yeah, if you rely on on active players using the space and monetizing the space for you, you you're you're going to be in for a struggle for for a little while. Uh, that's assuming that you you know that you weren't operating on the most razor thin. Um, margin or operation possible hopefully <laughs> uh, so. which you know as you shift more towards a restaurant business when you open a board game cafe that's from what I understand is uh, is the case is uh, a lot of thin margins and uh, yeah yeah because of the, uh, you, the those types of businesses are just way more uh, staff intensive you, yeah. you need lots more staff and uh and then if you sell some kind of like food um that record that fresh food especially then you, you, that, that stuff goes bad and there's attrition um yeah it's 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 weird and uh i know it's only been two weeks but we've i think we've already you can just see it uh floating around you know i think I've, we've seen um you know people People asking their community to try and you know scrape together uh, money for rent or whatever. Like it's it's it doesn't take much to to kind of throw a throw a business like that into into, into some. I think it's also chaos. worth worth noting that like uh, um, like I, I, sometimes people go to the place where like well if they're you know if they're uh, if they're struggling after a couple of weeks like did, was the business really that you know mm -hmm. doing that sure. well? But I think what people have to remember is like nobody was planning for this no and no. uh yeah. so your choices this isn't like uh <laughs> yeah yeah case in point like we just spent a ton of money renovating our basement to run events <laughs> yes yes yeah 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 that's true every time i go down there now um you know it's kind of funny it's still in this like uh uh because we like literally just before the uh, kind of lockdowns began we had we had run a 40k of tournament and uh everything was still kind of like in the same spot <laughs> like yeah the terrain the little bits of trash <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like uh an apocalyptic thing is coming and people just have to kind of like quickly gather their things and leave and then and then no one had time to come back and then like you know fix it or whatever or clean it up so um i mean that that part is just of course sorry being lazy but uh, <laughs> still it's it's a it's a weird feeling when i when i went down there recently it's like kind of it's almost like it's like frozen in time you know frozen in time yeah yeah let it go yeah but uh yeah, you, it, it's. I mean, we're we're. I think I think we're fortunate that we're not in a that we're being in 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 like the fifth year or whatever. We 
um, have had time to iron out the like things that like you know what works, what doesn't work, how much money we should have just saved for this or that or contingencies and what type of like you know um, something we did this week is um, oddly and we'll see if it was proved to be a smart move or not is we, we did um, reorder some hobby supplies and and because we, we were like well you know that's what's selling well and we should we should have some cool stuff to sell going forward um, but I was yeah. actually also talking to the GW rep today and, oh, there you uh, go. Yeah, you know, it's 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 a, it gives you a better like because you know Jay and I only have like our sample size of like who we talk to, and even though we're well connected in the in the area and we talk to a lot of other shop owners, it's still a pretty small sample size. But yeah. talking to our rep, he gives us a much better idea of what's going on. And apparently, yeah, like across the board, everyone's sales are down pretty significantly. But um, the things that are moving are paints and brushes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, step so those of you in will have uh, a pretty pretty uh, substantial stock of uh, brushes and more uh, and some paint um, and wet palettes and things and we still have stock of airbrushes and things so um, so we'll have everything you need to keep keep building and painting that pile of stuff that you've been neglecting <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah, the, so the other thing, um, for those people that don't know how, like, you know, day-to-day -day operations kind of work in a hobby store, um, a, a shop like ours will place, like, anywhere between three and ten orders a week, depending on the week. Just because the nature of, like, how many places you need to get things from um, to, like, keep a, keep a store stocked. And the one thing that's really affecting all businesses right now it, even ones that are kind of staying afloat with the sales they're doing is that the inventory is drying up because things aren't being produced things aren't being distributed so that's um that's the more worrisome thing that we're going to probably face heading into the i'd say the later half of april is what is the plan to fire up um production and distribution um, otherwise you know eventually you run out of things to sell <laughs> well yeah there's already a few uh you know, we, we didn't we were in like a hobby warehouse so we didn't have like multi like many multiples of certain things we usually have only like one or two of, a, of an item because it was generally very easy to get back so there's already a few um things that are like you know like I think I'm out of Iron Hands Codex supplement or something, so it's like yeah, no, no one's getting that for a while from our store, you know. Like it's it's and it's, it's funny. It's 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 almost like modern modern distribution, like um, uh, whatever you want to call them, uh, networks. Just the, the speed of everything. Supply chain. It, it's yeah. Yeah, the supply chain. Uh, um, uh, it's it's so sophisticated, but that it allows you to carry a lighter inventory and a lot like a larger inventory of different unique things but not as deep of an inventory um you don't have to because you can just restock uh, you, really you get, you really know, punishing people for that now <laughs> yeah. 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 and it's just not something you would uh be able to prepare for or plan for because it's pretty unique well, yeah, well, we had years and years where that was the case, and it wasn't even an issue. The other, the other obviously, thing is going to be, um, it's already becoming a problem, but become even greater uh, later, is uh, our garbage dollar. Yep. So, already already affecting us big yeah. time. So, um, you know, let's say May rolls around, and... Um, you know, GW fires up the factory like they think they might be able to. Although I, I believe, albeit I think might be a bit wishful thinking, but we'll see. Hopefully, they're right and I'm wrong. Um, actually, their their price probably won't change, but uh, the other games and, and, and products we sell that aren't, you know, that come from a smaller company or whatever. Yeah, that that 
you might walk in and a forty dollar item that you know from a month ago might be sixty or something crazy because of the, the dollars just gotten that bad so quickly. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it bounces back. But there, there's going to be. Uh, I think what else is going to happen is the likelihood of some more smaller, like interesting fringe games and products may not come into shops for a while or as quickly as they may have before. People are just not going to be a priority. 100%. You're absolutely 100% right. And uh, anyone who just made a new miniature game or is, uh, you know, a game has come out in the last couple of years and they're just trying to get its feet under, uh, probably going to get hit the hardest for sure. I think um, one of our suppliers was talking to me today about um, uh, uh, what's it called? I think it's called Sky Tier. It's like a new miniatures board game. It looks actually looks really cool. Mm -hmm. um, these two creators that I think they're out of Italy which is like obviously one of the hardest hit countries in the world right now oh, you're like, oh boy <laughs> um, but they just got this game off the ground these guys are like two really big magic players and uh, apparently the game it plays a bit like a MOBA like a lane pushing MOBA game but it has like yeah. magic like mechanics with cards which you know, like sounds cool really nice mm -hmm. miniatures and uh, it had been doing really well but uh, you know it's a good like case in point where like brand new company can they withstand like sustain like six months of nobody's ordering their product yep so yep. these are the things that are happening to and it's it's largely happening it sucks it's largely happening to creative independent young like smaller organizations that can't oh, yeah. really yeah. Yeah. not make money for a while well uh you know what do we have uh, and i don't know we, we we haven't decided on this one yet but someone asked me the other day on the um where they got Frosthaven, Gloomhaven, sequel to Gloomhaven or whatever. Right. Which, which you know, if you just if I just write that on a piece of paper, you're like, well, slam dunk, you know? <laughs> best, best rated board game ever is getting, like, essentially a standalone sequel or whatever. Yep. And it's typical Kickstarter. You know, you'll buy it today and you'll get it um, a year from now or whatever. Um, For what I can tell, though, that I believe they're – retailer i have to double check but i think their retailer tier is like a build we can build it we can build it however we want but still it's like am i really gonna you know how like am i, am I it's a big choice to decide to throw money at something that i'm not gonna get any return on for 100%, over a year 100 percent. it's just like how can you so um that's that's the tough part and that's gonna be the tough part with a lot a lot of these things um is is, is i just see a lot of people staying pat just like um yeah just just kind of like keep maintaining a, a safer course right now and and some of these things it just kind of puts fear into anybody you know like just of, of uncertainty um yeah. and even you know and i think that that's going to come out of this as well like uh, as a business like i do wonder how long that like hesitation will linger mm -hmm. you know yeah. Uh, Red Skull. I'm I'm just throwing some contrast paint on him right now. Um, so I, I used uh, Creed camo um, as the undercoat because he's a German. He's got a German uniform on. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, that's the flesh tear is red, which is a really it's got really nice coverage, and then Pterodon turquoise for the tesseract, and I'm just gonna put some black. Um, on his uh, his belts and his uh, suspenders, and then uh, start layering up some colors. I like to use the contrast paints for base coats. They they kind of give you two steps in one, which is nice. And they just go on so quick and smooth. You're not really fighting fighting to get color on your model. Yeah, I'll probably. Uh... I'll probably uh, do a similar thing with these banshees. I think I'll probably uh, the, the uh, Elder Force I started a couple years back is an all the way scheme, so probably hit them with some kind of uh, bone bone contrast paint, probably maybe skeleton horde, and then bone, and then do blacks and um, and I think my other color was turquoise, so I think each block in the color is pretty quick. I'm looking forward to seeing how quick I can. Get them looking like something. 
It's a bit like airbrushing. It just like you get colors on quick and you feel like the project's kind of getting moving. It gives you that motivation to paint. It gets moving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, I've already got it's going this. good. Thanks. I'm going to put this one. That'll be a, a rough day when uh, we run out of some contrast paints. <laughs> yes, that is that is the scary times. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we still have lots, but yes, certain colors are certain colors are yeah. are going to go. Like all paint ranges, there are better colors than others. Yeah, skeleton horde is good. I like. Um, Wildwood a lot as well. Such a nice color, yeah. Wildwood is. You wouldn't think it because it's just brown, but it's like really dark. Oh, a Kellen Green, yeah, another gray one. Once you've been painting for as long as Jay and I have, you get really excited about different shades of brown, you know? Yep. yep. Like really excited. Yep. Yep. Even though you own 400 browns, you know, you still I get own, excited. I own a lot of brown, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised about a Kellen Green. It's turquoise after all, so or teal or whatever. You have to play around with them. Um, like some of them have much more like opacity than others as well. Mm. Um, that's why the medium's really good to get. So you can you can dilute them if you need to. Yeah, the medium. The medium. Uh, if you haven't used it much, you should. It really uh, uh, makes a big difference in the. Uh, like you can you can cut them down a bit, and make them a little less potent. You can use them more as a glaze, and um, and it, it it it's one of those things you can if you find them too dark and then you're going back and highlighting too much, you just then then the contrast paint a little bit down, and it won't darken your model as much. <laughs> I had to buy red and blue, silver and brown. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, I like that. Truth, it's true. Where's my red? Where's my bow? Oh, never mind. Yeah, uh, I, I, part of me, like I guess the optimistic part of me, um, I, I can really foresee uh, things kind of opening back up a bit more regularly. Um, and then just like having a lot more extreme protocols in place in business. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, like our store, you could have a strict limit on how many people could be in the store at once um, and maintain sure. social distancing guidelines. Uh, like so for, for Jay and I, we'd have to probably have some floor stickers for suggestions for people to stand. Um, kind of like what they're doing in grocery stores. Um, and uh, and I can even already like some of our friends and I were talking about how we would play a game. Uh, oh, exercising yeah, yeah. social distancing which you know it's funny actually it's uh, probably going to be pretty easy considering the games are turn based yeah yeah yeah. you don't have to uh, you can just kind of do your thing and then step away or whatever I mean you're already four feet separated technically <laughs> those games you take one, put one step back and you're probably good you're good yep yeah. and uh Put your dice in a tray when you roll them so they don't go all over the place. I don't in know. Your own tray, yeah. yeah. Um, don't touch your opponent's models. You shouldn't do that anyways, even without social distancing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we're going to be okay um, firing things up. And if you didn't break your own tape measure, sorry, buddy. Yeah. No <laughs> lenders. You're... No, there's no lenders. <laughs> That's when uh, we stock up on tape measures. I'm not sure about the masks thing yet, just because um, I, I worry about supply on that stuff. Uh, would that yeah, go would... into like the people that actually need them? Um, exactly. Yeah, I, and... I wouldn't want to want to be the, the the asshole that is using a mask because I want to play some Warhammer or whatever <laughs> when someone needs it way more than like it's me. one thing if you build a mask because uh, they've done studies that say like you could double layer like linen and it will like mm -hmm. let's remember masks are to, are to protect other people from you uh, if you're symptomatic that's why people wear them 
Um, so like if I sneeze, I have a mask on. I don't spread the virus. Um, you're not really doing much for yourself to protect yourself wearing a mask. So it really it would really require everybody to be wearing them for it to be effective. Yeah. I don't know if we'll get to that point in Ontario. I also don't know if, uh, I don't know if, if as a society we're capable of, uh, of uh, complying with something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, until the, until the supply of masks gets, gets ramped up dramatically, I think we just need to let, uh, let the healthcare workers buy up all the stock. Obviously, if you work in a in a field where you have to be in contact with people, protect yourself for sure. But uh, the other thing I saw that was a big deal—it's like too many uh, poor, uh, you know, kid ringing through your items at the grocery store, or whatever. And uh, and I mean, he's you know, and and they've, I've seen them step up and they've got like you know all the shielding on, and whatever the hell this like stuff set up for those employees but like you get like people like wanting to just they wanted to like yeah i want to chat with this guy <laughs> and the guy, oh the kids, my like, the kids like please god no could you just buy your items and leave i don't want you to talk to me about this or whatever i'm not paid enough to <laughs> to be exposed to people <laughs> <laughs> i'm not getting more paid cash. Yeah, that's right yeah. In cash. Yeah, that's another one yeah yeah, let me get my and cat cash is disgusting at the best of times <laughs> yes like just from like talking about from a germ point of view that being said if there's no coronavirus here, acceptly happily accept your cash <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, some businesses are like cash or bust kind of thing, right? So it's tough. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. I mean, again, restaurant or whatever, with lots of businesses that are cash only, for sure. Or if you just, you know, really don't want to pay the CRA, it's another handy. <laughs> I remember our first meeting with the accountant, uh, Jane are just opening a business with two honest individuals and we're just like so honest, yeah. he's like if you don't want to if you don't I don't want to hear anything about taking cash and doing this and, I'm, and we're just like nah, I think we're just going to pay our bills properly <laughs> be good citizens uh, yeah. who needs the headache man you want to get audited year seven and just have to pull out all the stuff and it'll be a nightmare yeah, some power tripping CR agent agent's gonna be like, uh, he's like, my dream didn't come true, so I'm gonna ruin your life. I'm gonna ruin your life. Yeah. No thanks. No thanks. Banshee. Oh, that's awesome. They're such nice. Oh god, they're so nice. In this model, I love that they have the classic design still, but they just look so modern. They've done such a good job of doing that with, with the, re yeah. the new kits. Just makes you happy and sad at the same time. Sad because you want all of the aspect workers in plastic. Yes, <laughs> yes, you do. Uh. Yep. Well, nine more to go. Only <laughs> <laughs> nine more. I am using. Um, it's it's the uh, same. We've been selling this glue for years. It's just the smaller um, jar of it. So we sell one that comes in a white top, and it's a a square, a little cube of glue. And this one is a hexagon of glue. Uh, and it's uh, it's the same type of um, glue that melts plastic or whatever. Um, so um, just like anything you've been probably using for the last I don't know ten years to glue your plastic models for it literally uh well it's just it's got a brush on so you can apply it that way
Tamiya Cemento. Tamiya Cemento. That's right. Plastic works, but well, you don't like 1991 sculpts? What's the matter with you? <laughs> you need to rethink your life. Those are definitely, that's got to be a Jess Goodwin sculpt too, eh? The man's a legend. Which one, the, uh... Warp Spiders? Oh, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, he... I'm pretty sure he's involved in basically all of them. Every, anything that's an Eldar or Base Marine, it's got his prints on it. I, I like the brush actually. It took me a while because um, I was used to the needle nose applicator, and uh, there are some instances where you have a really tiny piece and the brush is a little bit uh, overkill. Um, but uh, most of the time, it's really good. It's just really good glue. I do like the Citadel plastic cement a lot too. Use use that a ton. Always keep your bits spoken like someone who has uh, infinite storage space. <laughs> I am like, I used to be that guy, and now I'm like, instant throwout guy. Yeah, I'm the same. I just like, dispose of it immediately. And sometimes I regret it, but uh, most of the time I'm pretty happy that I'm not uh, living that clutter life, you know? So I'm going to use Vallejo German Field Gray World War II. How appropriate is that? Yeah. Gonna be hailing a lot of Hydra here. <laughs> if anyone hasn't played Crisis Protocol, it is such a good game. Always keep your bits. No. Uh, no. No. You can't make me. <laughs> Peace that I. So I'm just gonna glaze right over top of my base coat, and we'll see what happens. Probably gonna be green. I'm guessing. You're not going to go conventional banshees. You're going to go a little off the off the chart. Um, uh, there's still going to be that. I don't know. The, 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 I'll still probably do a bunch of their um, whatever that pale bone color is. But uh, I don't know. I got to mix in. There's a. I got to mix in some turquoise. There's and, and black needs to be prominent. So well, I don't know. Just kind of wanted to match. Going Many moons match. ago, when I had an elder army. Um, I just did, I basically did an army color scheme, and then every aspect warrior had their their like main aspect color on the model, but it was mostly the army color scheme still, which is kind of yeah. Yeah. whack, but it worked in its own way. I mean, it looks good that way. Yeah. I also I'm also a fan of just the everything's different. It's cool too. <laughs> yeah, doing the uh, doing them all different that does look really nice too. I felt like uh, that's more work. <laughs> like Old man Zajac. Old man, yeah. yeah. Do -do. The delivery schedule for Marvel stuff. Uh, pff, honestly, it's it's in the air. Yeah. So it's a uh, hundred percent not coming out in April. There you go. Um, Asmodee is basically not shipping anything that whole month. 
So um, they were pretty consistently, like at least once once a month, three three ish new kits. So I I I'd be I'd be pretty shocked if we don't see something in May. But uh, we've got at least probably in my mind at least six six more weeks of waiting. The thing is, something we'll have to remember is this, this might not even have to do with the the product not being ready. It's there's not people to pack and ship it. Yep. So. And I think even when things get going again, these factories and whatever, and and even the warehouses are gonna have gonna have new policies in place. That's gonna really reduce their ability to do things fast. I think. Mm, that's true. I think uh, it's gonna be slow for a while. They might uh, be like try to order once a month type of thing or like uh, I don't know what they'll do but uh, time will tell but yeah we look at, I was really looking forward to the new Marvel Marvel releases there's all the Thanos stuff coming out and the Guardians of the Galaxy bad guys which are awesome I love my bad guys my goal is to finish a whole cabal first uh and then I can dive into those when they come out later. We have uh, we have the the starter box left. Uh, we got Loki and Hela. We got um, uh, Shuri and Okoya, and Black Panther. I think Black I Panther. Have. I think you can no longer. I think and I think that's it. You can play all if you want to play Black Panther and friends. You got we got everything you need. <laughs> Yeah, Black Panther. The Black Panther set is awesome. Black Panther is incredible, and Killmonger is real good for bad guys. Um, they are actually. Yeah, there's there's a there's a Spider-Man coming out um, with another Spider-Man model, uh, so you will be able to do that pretty soon. I mean, already you can. Like a couple of our customers started the game without buying the core set. It's just such a stupid deal. Like it's just so good. Like the terrain yeah. kits are like fifty bucks on their own, and they're real nice plastic terrain. So, Only plus you need the dice because they're they're like proprietary dice. Um, yeah, so you kind of just want to get the starter set. It's 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 pretty worth it. That's right. Yeah. I mean, you could use a d ten uh, d ten or whatever, but like, I don't know, man. That your your mind might get melted by trying to think of what what you rolled each time. Well, it's a D8 or whatever, but it's oh, got it's like D8, blanks. Yeah. It's got blanks and symbols, and it's got swirlies and crits, swirly. and hits and dodges, yeah. and yeah, yeah. yeah we'll I do another to... pick of our stock. Maybe to, I'll, I'll try to do one tomorrow just to update what's going on. The thing is, uh, the shelves don't change that quickly. No, so. they don't. I wish they did, but they don't. Yeah. I wish they don't. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we're trying not to. Uh, uh, oversaturate the. Uh, I know people have lots of time, but uh, I don't want to overly be like, you know, um, flood flood you with just kind of store stuff if it's not relevant or, or worth posting. Or <laughs> we, kind of, we kind of always tried to keep that mentality. Like we, the, the last thing we want to do is spam people. Yeah. So. But uh, I do try and focus on some there's the odd things that are running low so i want to make sure people have the chance to get them or they're they're gone so well gone for now <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> yeah i don't know what to say i'm sorry sorry blame the uh blame the schlub who bought it before you <laughs> yeah I'd blame Jay, but he's in the channel with me right now, so... Yeah, that's and usually... And vice versa, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's true. Why didn't, uh... When did my order get processed? Oh, it was Chris, you know? Pretty sure it was that other guy that works here. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the best part about having a partner, is you can just throw him under the bus whenever you get a chance, you know? Really, yeah, as soon as you can. Do 
Yeah, it's GW Modern Kits, man. They're just it's crazy. You know, like, they don't follow the like regular, you know, because uh, they're just, they're like over engineered. So it's not like, oh yeah, this torso. It's like, nah, this is a torso and a piece of the left arm, and then it cross glues with this back piece that has his leg on it, and <laughs> just like, and then and then the, you have to glue the head in before you glue the rest of this other thing, and you're like, ah, I'm crazy. This is like ten years ago. <laughs> GW is not still shipping. They have, they are shut down worldwide. No they're new not, releases until at least May. Yeah, their men, their factory is literally not pressing any models right now. They went, they went full darkness. The problem with doing staff picks is that Jay and I literally like everything we sell. Yeah, that's right. That's why it's on the wall. Yeah, staff pick. Yeah. <laughs> you people ask me this all the time. Do you recommend this? I'm and I'm like, yeah. That's yes. why I sell it. <laughs> well, yeah, true, true. <sighs> yeah. It'll usually be rarely the other way around, where you'd be like, don't buy that because of X or Y. Yeah, that's that's the only time. Um, but generally speaking, it's yeah. We we vet everything, and that's why we like basically sell only like two glues. It's like you don't need any other. I don't need to sell fifteen glues or whatever. It's like I sell one super glue and one pasta, and they're both fantastic. You don't need any other glue in your life. <laughs> People are like, show me more red skull. No. Let's see if I can. Uh... Actually, gonna change the camera zoom so you can see him a bit better. Thought I was zoomed in, but I'm not really zoomed in enough here. I get that 4x zoom. Gotta in. go 4x zoom. Do, do, do. Doing computer stuff, which is new for me. Let's do a little bit more zoom here. Holy cow! Look at that zoom. There you go. Contrast did a really nice job on the Tesseract. I know so it's easy. like it's like basically done. Why? <laughs> okay, okie dokie. There you go. So you can probably see him a bit better now. So I'm just blending up the. Uh... He's like done. <laughs> and, well, yeah. Let's let's calm down a little bit. He's not done, but. <laughs> This is the beauty of this type of painting. It's just like, it's just easy, you know? Plus, you gotta love superheroes. They're like three colors. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty small palettes, for sure. Oh, he was just watching you. He was, he's like wondering why you're not on the camera. Like, yeah, oh. you, you kind of need to have me on the camera to see Red Skull. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cartoon style, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to try to avoid doing the box paint schemes for these guys because like everybody's doing that for the most part so probably go a little more cartoony with most of them if I can Captain America is one of the nicer models, and I'd say he's probably one of the harder ones to paint in the box, too. Definitely. Problem is, he's a good guy, so I'm not going to paint him yet. Paint Cap. Yeah, that'd be a fun one to do, Jay, because you could do um, 
a non-metallic blue red shield. That'd be oh jeez, be a fun challenge for you. Sounds like work. For yeah, you, sounds... not for me. For you, not for you. For me, no, no. you're the one that does the crazy stuff. Why well, I do the crazy? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's not even a real captain. Wow! <laughs> 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 uh, well, don't tell him that. Chris is probably taking down his or hiding his uh, Captain America poster as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> Hiding tattoo and poster immediately. <laughs> He's definitely, in my opinion, the best uh, written and uh, done character in the Marvel movies. And I think just enjoyed the, those movies the most. Yeah, it's hard not to. It's hard to not to see Chris Evans and be like, "Oh." Captain America, even though even if he's like in a completely different movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a bit like uh, Wolverine now. I'm just not going to be able to picture him or anything else. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. Oh yeah, for those that don't know, I um, I was trying to stream out of the store a couple times now, and um, luckily uh, the first time I streamed, I, I recorded at the same time, and uh, the video recording turned out good because it's just recording what I was doing. But the stream turned out to be you know four frames per second chopped down or whatever, so it's <laughs> basically unwatchable. So, but if you want to watch Airbrushing One Hundred and One, it's now live on YouTube our YouTube uh, channel, which hasn't been used in about five years. Um, yep. but it's no. going to get some use now because I figure we can basically record videos of any, if anything we kind of have to do at the store like I can't airbrush at home unfortunately um, I'll just do a video at the store um, it won't be live but I'll post it after so if you want to subscribe on YouTube you can watch You can watch those I, I go over uh, put any of our uh, hobby things <laughs> yes so as uh, yeah, exactly. As uh, the videos go off Twitch, we'll just post them to YouTube. Yeah, they'll be they'll be kind of good good places to put some more detailed um, videos on, on on hobby related things. It's it's uh, and then and you also can have like you know if you just have one of us doing it with the you know camera and, the, and all the focus and less distractions, you can kind of uh, put more more energy to explaining the ins and outs of certain more uh, consuming techniques and, and things like that. Podcast. Oof, that's Jay's domain. He's the podcast master. Uh, the podcast? So we're basically podcasting right now, but also <laughs> doing activities. So um, unless unless you want to really like deep and research to... Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I ain't mean, nobody probably, got time for that. You know, you probably, I'm sure people would love a, a was it like a Dan Carlin esque thing about the hobby or something. <laughs> I kept ordering it again and again, again and again. Yeah, yeah go listen to Hardcore History. Don't uh, you don't want to listen to us on podcasts? Come That's, on, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna spend, if you're gonna spend precious podcast time. Speak. We'll watch Dan. <laughs> You'll actually learn something. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, this is just like the problem with the modern GW kit is like finding a, a piece on the sprue can be like it's like a game in itself. Yeah, absolutely. They're not. There's, there's no. There's kind of like a no method to the madness. It's a just, long time ago. No, it's just wherever it fit at the time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, well, I don't know. Hopefully, not too bad. What's his? What's his? What's his? Uh, helmet or whatever, blue. Hopefully, he dropped in some blue. <laughs> Good lord, rip. Press F to pay respects there. Holy cow. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I laugh, but I, I do that almost once a night, so. Oh, yeah. Followed by immediate immediate panic of, did I get painted? Oh, God. Yeah, usually, uh, uh, yeah, if I were to contribute a, a, any sort of tip right now, is uh, in those situations, uh, just, at least for me, I find I just quickly um, grab my widest brush that I have and quickly dunk it in water and then put it over that spot, and you, you can usually kind of... You can usually kind of wipe away the paint quickly, whatever whatever that extra color was that you just got on there. If you do it within the first like three seconds, you can usually yeah uh, yeah. A white yeah, well that's the easiest color to wipe off probably. So if it was black, you're probably it's probably over for you. But it's <laughs> over. I think of all the uh, delayed releases or whatever right now in the. Uh, one of the more frustrating ones will be the uh, Infinity stuff. They had like a cool new, uh, brand new, well, they always have a brand new <laughs> two-player starter or something, but this one is neat because I believe it had um, um, rules, code, simpler, code one, simpler, yeah. simpler rules for playing and getting into the game. So it, I think it's meant to be a kind of like a, I don't know we call it, prototype or a beta or a, I don't know. Or early release of kind of what the direction they're going in the future, which is like a cleaner, faster, uh, simpler rule set. So, oh, <laughs> oh actually, I'll answer his Kilpanks question here. Worst hobby disaster? I'm gonna go with uh, it's actually happened twice, and both times I wasn't near the thing. Um, we have like just uh, folding tables at the store, and um. And you know, like they're they're pretty like they're pretty easy to like uh, what do you call it agitate? You know, some guys want like walk you know bumps into it or whatever. Um, and uh, both times I had like some project. I think I forget what the first time was. The second time was a Orville Sakaran tank, and uh, it's it's like the horse heresy marine tank or whatever, and. Uh, yeah, one of the one of the, the legs, I don't know, someone like it either gave it either broke or gave way or whatever, and the table just basically like fell over with everything on it, all the paints, all the models. And uh I think everyone else had like their models were fine, but but the, the resin tank took it on the chin pretty hard against the floor. And, uh, and then it happened again sometime later with some other model. And both times it was it was my stuff that got the most damage. <laughs> Absolutely. So. I don't even know what mine would be. Actually, I have another hobby disaster that was. I know Jay's what? got like about thirty of them, so he can just well, keep like, going. I've got a bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most of this them one are self-inflicted too. This this other one was was actually uh, way older. It was like it actually also involved a forgeable model. Um, Many many years when I still worked at the Games Workshop at Square One, it was um, I don't know what it was. It was like one of these stupid things. Like basically, all the staff members we we decided this is when um, uh, we worked we worked for Ash directly or whatever. He um, we decided to all buy Forgeable planes for some stupid reason. Like I don't know to to to, to, to I don't know make plane noises or something. I don't know why. Was, we, that is kind of stupid, but yeah. So we all bought. Um, so I bought. I bought like I didn't go crazy or whatever. I bought like the. Yeah, uh, Eldar has like their Phoenix called like the Phoenix Bomber or whatever. It's like a hundred and fifty bucks or something. It's like one of it's one of the more reasonable kits. And um, model itself was fine, and I was painting it. And I, what happened is I, it was, I think it was after I primed it. I just like I basically primed it, and I got like a thumbprint on it somehow because I guess I like inadvertently touched it and 
that was it. I was trying to like figure out all these ways I could like um fix that, you know, fill it or whatever. And I was a little bit more uh like more amateur at the hobby at that time. I didn't have quite this like if it happened to me today, I I know exactly how I would fix it, but at that time um uh, yeah, it was like I tried I just I'm like, oh, maybe I can just paint it a bunch and like, you know, get get rid of that that issue with that and then this and I ended up having to strip the whole thing. So it was just one of those really ended up in a bath, didn't it or whatever? Yeah. Still ended up in a bath. bath. Yeah. But, uh, at the end of the day it, it, it came out fine the second time, but yeah. A drop of Marine Army, that's pretty bad. Yeah, I, I don't wish that on anyone. Drop an army in a tournament. Yikes. Grand opening, well, old man. Yeah, is that wow. is, is that Saunders? I think you're showing your age, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hobby disaster. <laughs> oh man those are all terrible this is a bad topic guys how do we get on this yeah this is like, this is like cringe land <laughs> i don't know which one's worth Dave, dave's like embarrassing thing or or the uh the taking a chunk of their finger yeah oh. i think i'd be more mortified with the with dave's story because I've like, I've accidentally stabbed myself many times before. <laughs> yeah, self yeah. When you self inflict damage to yourself, it's like when you like rip somebody else's model. It's like whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So mine are all pretty f more funny, and they do involve hobby knives. So, oh yeah. yeah. Um, there's been at least two instances. One uh, back when I used to work at Games Workshop Young and Lawrence, I was like cutting cutting my blood letters off the square bases, sorry, off the round bases and putting them on the square bases, which is fucking, it's pretty ironic now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> should have just kept them the way they were. Yeah. Um, and uh, they were like really on their like plastic cement style. So I'm like just hacking with a knife like this, right? And you know, you kind of like, once you're th through 20 blood letters, you're kind of not paying attention as much. And I just go into my thumb, like boom, you know, like deep, like almost to the bone. It might've been to the bone. Ugh. And then I like I spend like a good half an hour like patching myself up. <laughs> There's blood everywhere, or whatever. It is. I'm like, okay, I gotta finish this. The first cut I make is into my other thumb. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Jay was present when I did that at a hobby night. Uh, oh at yeah, Divey's yes. house one time. Because it happened, uh, so you did it more, more than one time. That's the best part about and, it. And uh, the, the one yeah. of Dave's was was a lot less uh, extreme. Yeah, you didn't cack into the bone or whatever. I didn't have the, the thought, do I need stitches here? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it's still... Yeah. Hobby knives and me don't get along too well. I just like... I've just gotten used to cutting towards myself and it's a horrible habit. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know how you can't... <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, get like a, get the accurate cut or whatever. It just feels It feels right, you know? It feels right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Ah, I did it. Yeah. That's true. Usually your brain alarms you well and ahead of time <laughs> to not hold them. 
the knife or the thing or, the, or look down the barrel of the gun or whatever. <laughs> My spidey sense is tingling. Uh, Something tells me danger's on the way. Danger's I'm on gonna the way. I'm going to do nothing about it. Oh, uh, no. I've hurt myself. No, no. It's okay. I'll just, you know. Usually I find that you're making like a, a value calculation in your mind. Value, that it's yeah. like going to be 1% more difficult to do it not the way you're doing. Right. So you're like, I'll take 90% more risk for 1% yeah, easier. Sure. You know? And then boom, yeah. finger smash. Yeah. Don't do a Chris does video, yeah. yeah. No, let's not make that. Let's not make that. It's going to be a video of Chris like cutting himself on uh, on YouTube or whatever. Not cool. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would imagine most hobby disasters or the painful ones all have to do with the hobby knife for sure. Oh yeah. It's just you're 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 sliding it across. It's usually a smooth plastic thing or whatever. <laughs> and applying way too much pressure. The other issue is there are certain hobby things that probably you should use like a you know like if we all had a a tool shop or whatever with like all these like like other tools you could do certain things it's a lot safer than trying to just jam a knife <laughs> yeah i think the problem is a lot of the time in the hobby you're just using a generic thing for and then, pretty much everything yeah pin vices yeah sure oh i've definitely pin vice through something into my hand for sure yeah, yeah. that's that that one always really hurts <laughs> at least with the knife you get like uh I always find it's just such a, it's like a smooth cut, so you get like that like couple seconds of like, I hurt myself. I don't feel pain. The pin vice is yeah. immediate. Like ah, oh, I've been stabbed. Yeah, I've been stabbed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's more of a stabbing motion. You got me. Asked. Um, no, I tend to see them usually painted in um, a kind of more yellowy green tone, that like moot green kind of, or even brighter. Um, I actually really like the scale greens, I think. I think, what is it? Uh, Oh, I can't remember what the... The ratty? Is it a ratty? The ratty, ratty, and there's also spring green or whatever. Yep, or fall or yeah. spring or... Whatever they call it, yeah. I think it's spring green. And then you... And then I, so when I painted my um, forks recently, I did that. And, I, and then I added... A, I would add a little bit of white and a little bit of um, contrast green. I think I add a flush or something. Kind of plays in there and tone it down. Seem to work for me. Parts for the SATA brushes. Uh, no, time to get a new airbrush, bud. Yeah, that's from five years ago. I don't think like they were a very specific item we got from a specific place. I don't know if they. Uh, he did, yeah, he's like we had a, we had a customer that worked for. Uh... For the company, yeah. For the company, yeah. and now now he doesn't yeah. uh, work there anymore, so I wouldn't even know how we would get them for you. We do sell a equivalent or better airbrush for 149 bucks, though. So, yeah. If you're uh, yeah, Devin Devin just got one, so yeah, got the uh, Evolution Silver line that we saw. Yeah. Or if you want to splurge, you can get a triple coated premium quality infinity cr plus watch my video on youtube and, yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> no i just know alex has been airbrushing for a while so uh, it might be worth just get, going out and getting something that will last you for 20 years as opposed to five or ten the ones we sell now though are um, well, a lot more bulletproof we, we deal directly with the company and stock them regularly so and we stock um, all the critical parts anyway. 
in quantities. So. Deal 10. Deal 10 is like a neutral. Kind of warmer. Yeah, you could probably do... You could try that. I think it's got a bit of purple in it, doesn't it? I think. It's definitely yeah, like on the like the for, in terms of hue, it's on the brighter side for sure. In terms of yeah, its like, saturation, might, I guess. Might be a good shade, Alex. Yeah. For what to what's balance to balance the heat, he's painting um. Uh, Alpha Gremlins. Oh yeah, cool. So it was kind of like. What's your base code, Alex? Did you say? No, he was just throwing out like, how would you guys do it, or what's the like? Is there like a contrast, baby? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's wondering the contrast like a, if there was like a specific. The, the greens are super nice. I said that uh, I think the bar on in the art, it's usually like a pretty bright. It's like a yellowy yellow, green almost. Yellowy green, yeah. yeah, yeah. You could try plague bearer or uh, I'm trying to think of which uh, yellowy greens they have. I don't know. Too many paint colors, man. Too many. Now we get those Chimera paint sets coming in. I'm like, I'm oh, try yeah. those, you know? I just want to try them. Yeah, you could do moot green and you could even you could even take a bit of the edge off of it with like uh, and John does this, our buddy John, a lot of the time, just by mixing in a little bit of like a bright bone instead of white to bring it up a bit, you know, just to soften, mm -hmm. soften the highlight, just so it's not quite so punchy. Because moo green is super bright, it's, it's, it's super de duper de. It's pow instead of pa. That's right. Sometimes you need pa. You know, sometimes you don't need the whole pow. Sometimes. I'll highlight your black straps blue, Mr. Red Skull. Why not? While well, you're using all your uh, all your creative powers there, eh? You know, like, yeah, it's the most my artisty brain could come up with, you know. And you're like, oh, this is this is red. I should do this blue. This is blue. I should do this red. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna jam, <laughs> I think I'm just gonna jam blue into all the colors, you know. Just see what happens. <laughs> Smash it. The question for everyone else, though, is this: a, is this a blue, gray, black, or a gray, blue, <laughs> or a blue, black, gray? Hmm. Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> yeah, got it. Yeah, I, I remember when. Uh, yeah, one would just say I guess Will Ferrell's height was like one two thousand, early to two thousand five to two thousand eight or something. Probably, yeah. yeah. We watched those movies a lot. There's like, a lot of watching that. Like, oh, how many times I've seen some of those, you know. Catalina Winemixer. Yeah, <laughs> Step Brothers. Yeah. It's, it's, I, it's... Still, I still think the other guys was the best one of the lot, though. That's the... Yeah, that one's that one's pretty funny. Those movies it's just, just scene like, after they... scene of just like great jokes. Yeah. They just kind of build as you watch them, you know. Like uh, there's just things that don't seem funny initially get funnier, and yeah, that's the great thing about those movies. They're, and they're just really stupid too, so. There's that, <laughs> and I think I think both Chris and I's wives hate yeah. Will Ferrell movies. Literally hate. Like she she like vomits when she see like the idea of watching a Will Ferrell movie like physically makes her ill. <laughs> and they're like same with this funny. My, my wife hates The Office too, but I could just keep watching it again and again. And, again. and they, she's it's, like, it's funny because if they walk in on you watching it, they're just so disgusted with you. It's disgusting. 
side just are you fucking kidding me again how can you watch this again (laughs) oof just fit it fits so well like an old glove you know you just like sometimes you need to just watch it i don't know if it's overrated it's uh i mean it's okay to be wrong sometimes you know it's fine (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I do declare bankruptcy I declare <laughs> <laughs> okay boomer yeah. yeah that's fair that's a fair comment <clears throat> look man Seinfeld reruns make me feel warm inside okay oh man call me what you want I do love that. It's one of my friends <laughs> has all the Seinfeld and whatever on Black server. And uh, uh, I love the moments where he's, uh, we're playing a video game and he's getting his bandwidth is getting crushed. And he's like, oh, where's my game? I go, it's because Chris is fucking watching Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Too good. <laughs> I love that. It's just a great show to watch while you paint. You almost don't even need to look at the screen. It's just well, not not when you've also like, yeah, seen it, like line line for line or whatever. You make a strong point. I think Netflix is supposed to lose the office or something so in the next couple of years or whatever. I'm like, I, could, I just cancel my subscription, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like you should send them a letter say lose office, lose me. <laughs> no, does it? What do we can? What do we can? What, what can we watch now? Fucking Tiger, whatever. It's that guy King Tiger. <laughs> Everyone's talking about them. I'm just like, I'm just, uh, I can't do it, guys. I'm sorry. Like, I just, I can't. I'm sure it's good. I'm sure it's compelling. I just. uh Compelling sounds like a strong word, though. Yeah, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not compelling. It's probably a bit like making a murderer, where you just like get sucked into this story. And oh, jeez, yeah. Uh, making yeah. a murderer was pretty good, though. Like, Everyone got sucked that. into that for a little a bit. Show. Yeah. yeah. But are you the master of your domain? <laughs> What does he say to Kramer? He's like, you, you'll be done before it break out the check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's too good. You wouldn't want to compete with George in that, that's for sure. No. Yeah, that's the one where he got, uh, he was getting intelligent or smarter or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the first season of Westworld and uh, I absolutely I absolutely loved it and uh, I just had no desire to watch a second season and it's weird because like the first season just felt like it ended to me like like I knew everything I needed to know about Westworld like I didn't want to know more it was just like a perfect season of television and uh, I just didn't feel it was it felt a bit like a uh, true detective even though there's a bit of an open end to it i just i was done so i just i didn't feel like uh inter- interested really in, in learning more about it i was just kind of happy did you ever watch westworld jay no season one's really good yeah I'll add it to the list of hundreds of shows that no, I know. <laughs> should watch that I don't, yeah. Yeah. I'm getting more and more like that too, yeah. Are you? Yeah. I haven't really watched too much uh, TV. It's tough. You only have like so many uh, hours left or whatever. So you, yeah. yeah. I think it's that whole like, can I, can I risk watching something I won't like? Yeah. And I think for me, like dramatic television, the problem with it is I can't paint um, or hobby while I watch it because it's just, you have to, 
you have to be focused on what's going on. And uh, I, w I would usually do that sort of thing with Heather. And uh, she goes to bed early now because of Riley. Yeah. She's super young, so. I imagine when, when uh, we get back to hanging out a bit more in the evenings, we'll probably watch a bit more television. But Yeah. Until then. Let's go. We got ten, nine, ten, ten pieces of model. It's not bad. No. It's. It's not nothing, but it's. Could be worse. Could be building mouth model, you know. Oh yeah. Hmm. Despair green or Huldra blue? I think I'll probably go despair green. It looks a lot more like Incubi. I'm just getting drawn into more colors that look like Incubi Darkness. I find. <laughs> oh, sure. Color is like cocaine. I can't get off it. Yeah. What is it? What is that? Are you... Despair Green. Is that a fantasy and games color? Is yeah. that what that is? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's nice. Oof. <laughs> that's a pretty nice color right there. I'm going to do a bit of shading. She hairs pretty well. Three pieces per, or whatever. Oh yeah, three they're pieces. Not for the hair, they're right? not. They're not messing around with. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, dropped another piece. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess the uh, Will Ferrell's just entered that part of his career where uh, he can't just do the same thing anymore. Yeah. But, uh, at some point, it just uh, doesn't work anymore. It's where you just uh, retire from acting. <laughs> or whatever. There's no shame in that. There's no. Um, Wish more people uh, just did it, you know? I think that's just the case, especially with comedic actors. At some point, you gotta just like walk away, <laughs> or, or change and evolve, which uh, I, Try, think, I yeah. find a few people can do, yeah, effectively. Yeah. Yep. Nice coming along here. I have to get some color on the base if it doesn't look like. I always find models with white prime bases look ridiculous until you do put the base on. Yeah, it's got like that mega unfinished kind of. It's so noticeable. Well, it's a bit like uh, you know those bases we were doing for Adepticon with all the goop on them. They, they look. They look like really rough until they're painted yeah or like or like it, are you guys sure about this <laughs> yeah yeah there's a bit of a ooh, i don't know it's fine yeah 
It'll be fine. That's definitely one thing you get uh, with just time in the hobby is uh, you're able to have a, a more clear vision of what something will look like at the end. Yeah. Um, it comes from confidence in your ability, just kind of like being used to painting a lot. And uh, I find like uh, and just having faith, like kind of faith in the process, um, seeing it through. I guess the thing everyone wants to know, though, is um, will they be seeing the cat again? Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Just been burning to burning to know, you know. You need to know if I'm going to keep yeah. still painting the same model. Uh, the answer, I, I decided to spare people that for uh, a bit today. <laughs> <laughs> also, to make my to, to to make myself like feel better or whatever. Getting something else, done. getting something. I need a win, you know, like a small win. The next Psychic Awakening book is Saga of the Cat. It goes on, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I don't know. It's. It's taking longer than than I would like, but but it's sometimes it just is like that. Models uh, don't paint nice and quick like uh, <laughs> poor cat. That's Red Skull. Uh, <laughs> whoosh. Whoosh. People have spoken. Spoken. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring it back next time. Run it back. You cat person. Uh, if I bring it closer, it's going to lose focus. But it's not. The camera's not set up to do. Uh, I don't have autofocus on it because it's funky wall painting. But uh, that's probably as close as I can get without looking. Uh, yeah, I do. Where's the cow? The cat's actually just right. Show people where I got to last time. Ooh. More light. Closer. Closer. The last time we were at, I was painting the uh, braids or whatever they are. Oops. So we went with... Uh, not asked for suggestions went with this like yellow and uh it's like yellow and kind of purple together glazing and stuff but it actually looked pretty good so next hopefully i got a little bit more to do on these braids and then hopefully we'll do will be the next thing i gotta start putting working on the body i did some Purple's back here. The hair, or whatever it is, the fur. They need some uh, detailing. Get, give more of the fur, or whatever. And then uh, now I have this tiger stripe or something on its body that I need to um, do. I should have just smashed contrast paint on and called it a day, but it's kind Sucker. of a fault. Yep. yep. On my own dumb vault. And there's your first don't be like Jay video. That's right. <laughs> we'll probably wrap up in a few minutes. Yep. Jay for the win. Well, you know, let's, uh, you know, it is if you, you want a consistent level, you look to Chris. If you want uh, some crazy stuff, you look to me. <laughs> Something that'll blow your mind or not. 
he gets to say that for another year and then we'll see you know yeah until next time <laughs> oh. have to bribe a judge or something man <laughs> Best part, I still, the best part was still that I got Vince and Trillo to, to pick my army. Like, great. Because there was no arguing that it was in some Joe Schmo or whatever. It was like a, some, some guy people, people who people care about or something. Yeah. I'd be like, Vince and Trillo pick my army. would be like, oh, wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's all back off. I know I was already planning all my excuses, you know, I was like, ah, the lighting wasn't good, and then they had flashlights, and then I was like, okay, what's my next excuse, okay, uh, <laughs> the judge the probably doesn't know what he's looking at, but then it was Vince, yeah. and I was like, ah, yeah. Yeah. I'm all out, I'm all out of excuses, do better, suck less, <sighs> whoosh, it's, yeah, I thought Fire Slayers were going to be the, uh... <laughs> Yeah. The ones. Apparently, I don't want it enough, you know? No. No. You're not willing to, to sacrifice. To die much. or whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah paint, paint 150 Fire Slayers or whatever it is. I mean, you'll probably win some games, too. Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty disgusting right now. I know my Bone Reaper army basically just loses them automatically game against them. <laughs> Don't you love that? Don't you love knowing that and going into a game? Yep. Oh, you played this? That The hard counter to my army? This is going to be great. Sweet. Oh, you take no damage too, but you do lots of mortal wounds? Great. <laughs> That's my favorite. It's my favorite thing in the world. Yeah. That's why I love Infinity sometimes, you know? It doesn't matter how uh, ironclad your plan is. There's always a, a goober with a basic weapon in the corner that get, rolls a crit and gets you. That is pretty awesome. It's kind of like this this like rare bit of uh, justice and equality that's missing in regular society. <laughs> <laughs> in Infinity, the little guy some, you occasionally wins. Yep. Yeah, let us know, guys, what you want us to talk about next week. We'll just uh, usually have our little discussion at the beginning and then just move into a little bit of a free chat. But if you guys have any questions or want to know anything in detail about the business, um, yeah. Yeah, if you missed today's opening, it was... Uh about how uh what what hobby retail stores are probably going through right now or what, what's going on the short answer is not a lot <laughs> yeah it's not good yeah Dwayne gave me a list of items well I'll, I'll cover those more on the uh, I think the next video we'll, we'll do a little more in depth or i'll do a, a video at the shop maybe a little more in depth on some painting painting techniques um those ones are uh yeah yeah, yeah i know i got through <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe i can <laughs> knock one out right now let me i got i, I got oh, doing a, um uh, you know what next time i'll, I'll probably i'll gonna i'll cover power weapons um, cause that'll be relevant to these, all these banshees I'm painting and, uh, and, uh, we'll, we'll probably, probably what I would do before, um, is, is, um, prime them white and then, uh, um, do a bit of like, uh, 
get like some, 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 take some paint and some black paint and thin it a bit. And, um, what I've told, shown people before to make some really cool power weapons these days is you have to put, put some shadows in with the black, like, like some, basically create some harsh dark spots and light spots and then put some contrast paint on top. And it'll fill in the in between. Uh, and then after that, it's a bit of like uh, ad highlighting the edges, and and, uh, and you can get a pretty good looking power up in relatively quickly. So, do that uh, next time. Maybe I'll get, maybe I'll get a whole. I'll just I'll just I'll just like pin like five of these. I'll just do them one after the other. <laughs> That's usually on what camera. I do, and I, I know you on do that camera. too. Just pure power open sessions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I've got the power. All right. I think I'm going to stop here, but um, I'm going to do a nice, see if I can do a zoom in. Hi. Uh, High def shot of where I got to before we shut it down. Let's see if uh, see if this works. Da, 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 da. good yeah so i did some uh that's all basically just in the session isn't it yeah i started in the beginning so um i've done uh the contrast start to the cloak uh, everything got a contrast paint on it first and then i did one glaze highlight on everything except for the tesseract and then i'm just doing a quick glaze shade with the that um I guess the closest to cool in the games workshop would be Incubi Darkness, but it's called uh, Despair Green. It's quite a nice color. Just kind of blending the model a bit together. I got some of that in the red as, as well, just okay. to give it a bit of depth. All right, Dwayne, we'll see you. Yeah. See if I can do a super zoom here. Super focus. Oh, yeah, there we go. Cool. There you go. Yeah. Gives you a bit better of idea of what the face looks like there. Um, so I got to do some uh, kind of extreme highlights still. Pop everything extreme. a bit. Extreme, extreme, extreme. But um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out. It's a pretty simple model. Looks great. Danke, danke. All right, everybody. Thanks again. Uh, just do our little uh, shill here at the end. Thanks again for tuning in. And uh, as always, you can support us, www.lordsofwargames.com, uh, Facebook, now YouTube. That's right. <laughs> we're basically everywhere now, just being yeah. going everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, most days we're at the store 12 to 5 if you want to call in, um, ask us questions, or place an order. Okay, thanks, guys. We appreciate so all your help, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, good night.